to compete in this prize and everything in between. So my name is Nikki Batchelor. I am the prize director for the XPRIZE Carbon Removal. We have a great team on the XPRIZE side. If you want to just go to the next slide, Rupa, we have a few different um, bios and headshots just so you get to know the whole team. Um, we're a group of four who are running the main competition. We are joined by Rupa Danda Moody, who is here, our team relations specialist. She's been with XPRIZE about six years, as have I. And um, Michael Leach is our technical lead. He is um, going to be answering all the questions about what does it mean to actually build a carbon removal solution that will be eligible to compete in this competition. And then Marcus Extivore, who's not with us today, but he is the Vice President of Energy and Climate at XPRIZE. He's also been with XPRIZE for about six years. And the four of us actually used to run the NRG COSIA Carbon X Prize for the last uh, five years. We just awarded that $20 million competition earlier this year. So we're excited to kind of have that one under our belt and moving on to the next one and a much larger scope. Um, this new $100 million competition is gonna be a real exciting game changer for the space we hope and an opportunity to really support a lot of new emerging technologies in the carbon removal space. So this is our team and we'll be here every two weeks for this webinar series that we're starting now um, through the end of the competition registration period. So we are really just trying to be available to answer questions, to help folks understand what XPRIZE is, what does it mean to compete? How do you get your demonstrations to where they need to be to potentially win the prize? So if we kind of move on to the next slide here, I think that we, just wanted to give you a sense of XPRIZE for those who are not familiar. We are a nonprofit uh, foundation based in Los Angeles, California. We are really trying to tackle the world's uh, largest problems through competitions. That's the model that we use. We put an incentive out there. Um, the money usually comes from other donors, organizations, corporations. In this case, Elon Musk and his foundation for the XPRIZE carbon removal. And we really try and accelerate the rate of technology development in a space to tackle a certain challenge. So if we move on here, we work across three different domains, exploration, environment, and human equity. So we are really the team working on a lot of the environment challenges here. Uh, XPRIZE got our start in the exploration space though. The Ansari XPRIZE was our very first competition. And we really are proud of that work to kind of launch the private space industry. The Ansari X Prize was <clears throat> a real start for this organization, but we have diversified into all of these other spaces now. We're working on a handful of different challenges. I mentioned we just awarded the NRG COSIA Carbon X Prize. We have another new competition that launched recently around Feeding the Next Billion, which is really around uh, meatless meats. And then we have another competition around wrap, mapping the rainforest. We have done a series of prizes in the ocean space as well, mapping the ocean floor, ocean acidification. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to be digging into the climate space even deeper with this competition. We have a few stats here on the next slide, I believe, about how Oh, here's some of the competitions that I just mentioned that we've uh, concluded in the past and some of them are still active. You can see the full listing of all of these prizes on our website. Um, the next slide shows just some high level stats of how much um, we've awarded kind of to date. So 25 prizes have been launched over our um, history, 17 have been awarded to date. You can see that we have a number of prizes that are still in development and we have awarded over $100 million in prizes to teams like yourselves who are competing to win across many different topics and challenges. So there is kind of a growing ecosystem of XPRIZE alums that we're also kind of excited to be building out a whole network of that um, community. And you'll hear more about that over the next four years if you compete in the prize. But there is definitely kind of a network of people who compete in X prizes and who have won X prizes. And we like to continue to build that support system out to them um, kind of after the prizes are over. So let's dig into this competition, why you guys are all here, the X prize carbon removal. So just to level set where we're at with this competition and what the purpose of it really is, <clears throat> excuse me. So we run competitions, but our mission is really to accelerate and push a space forward. We like to catalyze markets. In this case, we are really trying to 
challenge innovators to demonstrate the viability of durable, low cost, scalable, and sustainable carbon removal solutions. We are here to tackle this mission and we are trying to really increase the supply that exists in the world um, immediately, but also to meet 2030 and 2050 goals. So if we move on, we have a few of the specific kind of objectives of the competition. As I mentioned, increasing the global supply of carbon removal. Through competitions, we also work really hard to demonstrate the scientific and technical viability of solutions. We do rigorous kind of measurement and val validation across solutions throughout the competition. Mike is gonna talk a bit more about that. What does it look like for this competition? He has a lot of experience on that specifically through our last prize as well, where we did deep validation of technologies over the last five years. And you know, we're also really here to accelerate the scaling and equitable deployment of proven carbon removal solutions. So what we wanna do is fund the most promising solutions, accelerate them to scale quickly, and then try and support those innovators over the long haul and inspire the next generation of talent to work on carbon removal, you'll see that we have a special carve out in this competition for students. We're really excited about that. That's something new for XPRIZE to run kind of a student competition alongside the main competition. Uh, we're gonna get into the details of what that means and who is eligible for that $5 million that we are getting out the door this year. But it's a great opportunity for um, teams to start getting some early seed capital into their projects. So definitely apply for that if you are eligible. Um, then I think we're moving forward two slides after this, Rupa, if we could go on to the next one. This is really just a high level timeline. So I mentioned the $5 million we're trying to get out the door this year for student awards. The next big tranche of funding though that's going to be awarded is also very quick. It's just next April. So within the first year, we will be awarding the milestone awards. We are looking for 15 promising teams to give $1 million awards to. The submission for that is going to be coming up in February of 2022, and then the judging and deliberation will take place and we'll award that $15 million, get it out the door to fund really promising and exciting innovative demonstrations. Mike will talk a little bit more about what that's gonna take, what it looks like to submit for that. And then ultimately, the rest of the money will be awarded in 2025. At the end of the competition, there will be a single grand prize winner that will take home the $50 million, as well as several runners up, up to three. The judges have some discretion here, depending on kind of who the most promising solutions are for the remainder of the awards. But this is just to give you a sense of what the, the master timeline looks like. There's more detail to this that we'll dig into over the next few slides, but I just wanna put this out here at the beginning and level set that there is definitely a big opportunity in the first year of the competition. So we're glad that you're on this webinar to kind of get started working on that because you will have to start building something immediately. It's not just about ideas and XPRIZE is really about demonstrating and proving that something works. So that's what we're here for today. I think the next slide might hand over to Mike. Hi everyone, uh, good morning and uh, thank you for uh, taking the time out of your days and staying up late and getting up early wherever you are in the world uh, to be with us today. Um, so the, the uh, one of the notable things about this project uh, is that it's really open to a vast uh, scope of solutions, really anything uh, that you can imagine that removes carbon from the environment and sequesters it durably is in scope. Um, we've been talking about uh, carbon dioxide removal in terms of these four tracks, air, ocean, land, and rocks. Um, but we're really open to anything that you can imagine, including combinations of these four or other uh, tracks or, or you know, th things that you can think of uh, to durably remove uh, carbon dioxide from the environment. So, um, so we when you register for the competition, you're asked sort of, you know, what track do you belong in? And, and that's really just for us to try and help understand where you all are coming from. Um, and and uh, one of the most uh, important parts is that everybody's uh, competing with everybody else. We don't, we don't have formal, um, 
formal uh, lanes that you're that you're competing in here. So um, everyone is welcome, and really the only requirement is that uh, your solution is carbon negative, and that you remove carbon dioxide durably. Um, I'll just add, uh, please ask uh, questions in the Q and A box, and we will um, we will try to answer them all uh, as we um, as we go here. So uh, part of uh, part of what we do here, you know, Nikki mentioned we run the competition. That's sort of our day jobs, but we also use these competitions to try and leverage impact in other ways, and we do that through some formal programming. Uh, two of the programs we'd like to highlight here are the Circular Carbon Network and the uh, Launchpad Accelerator through Air Miners and Creative Destruction Labs. The Circular Carbon Network is a network that we launched for the CarbonX Prize a few years back. Um, and it's really for, uh, for trying to match um, uh, carbon tech providers, technology providers with carbon tech funding and investing. Um, so this is something we'd encourage you to check out and register on um, as you seek funding for your carbon dioxide removal solutions. And the Launchpad Accelerator is something we're really excited about. It was just launched uh, in April, and it is a formal accelerator program to help um, catalyze and, and, and promote the development of carbon dioxide removal startups. And so um, this is something that's available for uh, everybody registered in the Car X Prize Carbon Removal. And um, we'd encourage you to uh, check out Air Miners and, um, and get in on that program. Okay, so I think this is what we're here for, how to compete. There's um, the first, Stage step is you need to register for the for the competition, and this is something that uh, my colleague Rupa is going to walk through in a few minutes. Um, this is like the first administrative point of entry, and uh, based on some of the comments I've been seeing in the chat, a lot of you here have registered already. Um, now, uh, like Nikki mentioned, we have a few uh, different payments, uh, prize payments happening. Um, the first is the student awards, the second is the milestone awards, and the third is the grand prize. Um, you know, the big, the big money. Um, and one, one point I just want to make very clear is you only need to register once. Um, if, if you're eligible, otherwise eligible for, for any or all of those um, awards, uh, you only need to register once. But there is a specific registration deadline that you have to, that you have to uh, register by in order to be eligible for each, um, each competition phase. So the next thing is, uh, you know, we get, we get questions. Oh, sorry, Rupa, you can go back. Uh, we get a lot of questions about, okay, you know, I've registered, now what do I do? Well, you start developing your solutions. Um, we're, we're really not gonna tell you uh, what to do or how to do it. It's really up to each team to build and operate and fundraise and do all the things that you need to do, build a team and hire staff and buy equipment, whatever you need to do. Um, it's really up, up to each team uh, to, make a plan and mobilize their carbon dioxide removal project. Um, in order to be eligible for the milestone awards, the uh, $1 million milestone awards that we'll be awarding early next year, you have to demonstrate a key component of your carbon removal solution. We don't require it to be at any particular scale, but we need to be able to uh, um, have confidence that it works. And so uh, there is a demonstration requirement for the milestone money. And so it is really important that uh, everybody who wants to be eligible for that money, you know, get to work and start building your demonstrations and and uh, uh, you know, um, kind of kind of uh, get get to get to work, you know. Um, for the grand prizes, we want to see a fully operational carbon removal solution. Um, we want to see it at a rate uh, a scale of a thousand tons per year. And um, there's a, a, a few other criteria that we'll talk about that will be used in the selection of the winner. Um, we are going to provide templates for the technical submissions for each stage of the competition. They're not available yet, um, but we will be providing them well in advance of each deadline. So, um, so uh, really, I, I think the, the message here is, is focus on developing those solutions, uh, read the guidelines if you haven't read the guidelines already. And, um, and uh, you know, stay tuned and we will uh, be communicating out the requirements for those technical sub submissions um, over this summer. Okay, next slide, uh, Rupa. So the, there are three main 
uh, requirements for competing in XPRIZE carbon removal. The first is build and run a working demonstration. This is actually the most important aspect of competing in really any XPRIZE and uh, XPRIZE carbon removal is no exception. We wanna see working demos. Now, depending on the phase of the program, uh, the demos are, are, you know, the expectations for the demo are a little bit different. For the student awards, we don't require a demo. We only require a, uh, a proposal um, with, with, uh, that, that demonstrates merit. Um, phase one, the milestone round of the competition, we require a proof of concept demo. So we really want to see a working demonstration of the key, uh, the key phenomenon that will remove carbon, uh, carbon dioxide from the environment and evidence that you can do it in a, in a um, net negative and durable way. And then finally, for the uh, grand prizes, we wanna see a fully working, fully operational demonstration that's actually removing carbon and actually sequestering it and actually starting to draw down uh, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Um, the, second, uh, the second thing we want you to do is calculate the fully considered cost of your solution in dollars per ton of carbon uh, at a scale of one megaton per year. So what this means is we would like to see a projection of what the cost will be for a megaton scale project. The reason we're asking for projections and the reason we're asking for megaton scale projections is because we want, to, uh, we want the judges to uh, consider the cost basis for these technologies at a reasonably large scale, you know, and one megaton is a very, it's, it's large, but it's still kind of, uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost, um, it's, it's large enough that we get a true ref reflection of the cost, um, but it's, it's, it's not so large that it's really kind of an abstract thing. So we are gonna wanna see teams um, sort of paint a picture for what those solutions look like at a megaton scale mm -hmm. and what the cost will be. And then finally, we want teams to make a case for how their technologies or how their techniques will scale um, to and beyond a uh, gigaton scale, because that's really the, that's really the, what, what we need to get to as, uh, as humanity here is, is many solutions operating at that gigaton scale. So we want to, we want to um, sort of make sure that uh, eligible solutions are truly scalable. You'll be evaluated on uh, three things, and uh, you know these th these things kind of these these three evaluation uh, criteria map very closely onto the uh, demonstration or the the um, demonstration requirements that I just described. Um, you'll be you'll be graded on your operational performance. You'll be graded on the fully considered cost, and you'll be graded on the sustainable uh, the sta sustainability and the scalability of uh, your carbon dioxide removal solutions. Um, so, uh, again, you know, these, uh, th these three are described in more detail in the, uh, in the prize guidelines. Um, and if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to download those guidelines and, and take a look and, and, uh, read through the evaluation criteria in a bit more detail. And like I said before, uh, we'll be releasing more information, uh, regarding the specific details of the submission. Um, the technical requirements for, for, for those submissions uh, in the coming months. Um, once you submit these technical submissions, your submissions will be put to a panel of expert judges. So the, the, um, the XPRIZE team really doesn't make the decision in terms of who gets the award. We have a panel of impartial expert judges who make these decisions. Um, and they do it by following this kind of flow. You know, they ask, are the operational requirements met? Yes or no? Are the solutions sustainable? Yes or no? Um, eligible uh, solutions will be ranked by cost and scale, and then the award decision will be made. So uh, where the rubber hits the road is really on the, uh, on the schedule, right? And um, so like Nikki said, we have a few different rounds of competition. I just wanted to point out a few of our key submission dates. On October 1st, we'll be accepting uh, uh, proposals from student teams. And uh, we'll talk about the student teams in a moment. And um, we, have a, we actually have $5 million uh, available for uh, student teams to uh, help, help uh, fund um, proposals by those teams. And those submissions are due October 1st. 
Um, submissions for the milestone awards of $1 million. We're giving away 15 of those awards. Uh, those submissions will be due on February 1st, 2022. And like I said before, you do have to have your demonstration uh, up and running, your demonstration of the key component, I should say, up and running, uh, but, but you know, certainly by that time, you know, and um, there's going to be a technical proposal that that is due on February 1st, and uh, that includes um, information about uh, what you've demonstrated, as well as your proposal for how you're going to build that out in the finals, um, as well as your cost model and, and some rationale about the sustainability. Then we kind of take a step back for a couple of years. Um, Rupa, you can go back. Um, so our next uh, deadline actually isn't until February of 2024. And that uh, gap in time, those, those two years is, is when teams are really going to be building out their solutions. Um, and by February 1st, 2024, uh, we want to see evidence of a fully operational demonstration. Um, we will be uh, soliciting uh, um, uh, applications at that time for a site visit, at which point we'll send our verification teams to uh, check out the uh, the um, uh, to to check out the the teams who are demonstrating at that time, and uh, on successful completion of a site visit, um, you'll be invited to submit for uh, consideration for the grand prize uh, in February of 2025. Okay, so let's talk about the student competition for a moment. So this is a really interesting program. And um, one of our objectives uh, in the XPRIZE carbon removal was to um, one, you know, drive some funding into early stage ideas, but two, ensure that the competition is accessible to young people. Uh, we really wanna try and, um, try and uh, um, you know, inspire the next generation of, in of innovators. Um, we have a total of $5 million in awards that we're gonna be granting this fall. Uh, 3 million of that will go to uh, student teams who are competing in the competition. So for, for student teams who intend to submit to the milestone round and the grand prize round and actually build out a carbon dioxide removal project, uh, we're granting up to $250,000 per team um, for, uh, for, for those teams. And we have $2 million uh, allocated to proposals uh, to develop technologies uh, that contribute to the measurement, reporting, and verification of CDR technologies. So um, teams who are seeking awards for, uh, for, for this, um, this sort of category um, don't necessarily have to demonstrate removal of carbon dioxide but, um, but uh, sort of contribute to the CDR community in, uh, in, a, in a significant way. And uh, we'll be making awards of up to $100,000 um, for, for those teams. Uh, the eligibility for students is, um, again, this is all defined in the, um, in the prize guidelines. So please download those guidelines and take a look because the, the um, you know, all of these specific, uh, Things are, are laid out in very clear detail there. Um, student teams can be formed out of existing research groups, student clubs, or they could be independently incorporated. Uh, we, we really don't uh, have any requirement that uh, student teams are sort of formally uh, part of any particular academic institution. Um, but student teams must be student led and composed of at least 50% students. So we get a lot of questions from people saying, well, you know, I'm not a student, but can I start a student team? And the answer is yes. If you have student leaders and you have um, at least half uh, of students on your team, then, uh, then you're eligible for the student awards. Um, we also define students as being 35 or younger and enrolled in an educational institution for this academic year or recently graduated. So, um, so again, there's a, you know, we're, we, we are focusing on younger people and we're focusing on, on folks who are, uh, are pursuing their education or recently graduated. Uh, we require you to identify an academic advisor or a business leader who will act as a mentor to the team. So again, we don't necessarily um, require student teams to be like within the university or, or I should say the school, the institution, but we do want to see um, teams have an uh, academic or business advisor, and we do want to see a letter of support from an institution. So, so just kind of to, to acknowledge that, um, 
that, uh, that your institution sort of knows what's going on. Um, the awards will be made to the most impactful proposals and no working demonstration is required at the time of submission. So, so unlike the, uh, the uh, milestone and grand prize rounds of the competition, the student awards um, will not, do not necessarily have to have a demonst working demonstration at the time of the submission. I think it's fair to say that uh, it would help if you had a demonstration, but it's not required. Um, your your um, proposals will be um, judged based on the merit of the proposal um, rather than the, the, the quality of a demonstration. Um, like I said, we have uh, panels of expert third party judges uh, who are gonna review the proposals and, um, and make those award decisions in late 2021. And these proposals are due on October 1st. So if you are a student or you um, have a bunch of friends who are students and you want to put together a proposal for this, um, we'd love to see you register and form a team and um, submit to the student award um, application. You can register at xprize.org slash carbon removal. That's also where you can find the guidelines. I mentioned this a couple of times. Um, please download the guidelines. It's a, it's a you know, it's a pretty long document, but I think it's pretty succinct and pretty readable. And it's really important that you read the whole thing top to bottom and understand uh, all of the competition requirements because um, that's that's really um, that's really what's going to help you know help you win. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to pass it off to uh, Rupa, who's going to talk yes. about registration. Okay, hi everyone. I'm going to try to run through these slides pretty quickly because I wanna make sure we leave plenty of time for questions. Um, so the prize operations platform is where everything happens on this prize. Um, it's the main hub for all, uh, actually all X prize uh, operations, but um, also of course this prize. Um, so what can you do on this platform? This is where you register. This is where you create your team profile. This is where you add team members. Uh, where you sign the competitor agreement, uh, where you pay the fee, um, and ex as well as, uh, you know, search for new team members that uh, you'd like to join your team or vice versa. So the way that you get to uh, the POP platform is from the main page, uh, the prize, uh, XPRIZE carbon removal, you can click the register now button. And once you're in, you can go to login up in the right corner. Another way you can get there is also just going to pop.xprize.org. What you're gonna do here is set up, a, set up an account. Once you set up the account, you'll get a registration email to confirm your account and your registration. It'll look like this. And then you confirm your registration. Um, once you're in, you're going to be creating a user profile. This is just a user profile to access the prize operations platform. It's different from your team profile. This is just the first step. So this is where you just fill out some basic information about yourself, as well as selecting um, where it says interests at the bottom, you know, which prizes you're interested in. In this case, you would click on X prize carbon removal. Um, so once you do that, you'll be able to log in and be in the uh, prize operations platform. You'll find the prize, X prize carbon removal and click create a team. Once, you're, once you've created a team, you'll have access to a dashboard that is, um, that's going to have everything that you entered um, for your team profile. And you'll see your activities, which is um, everything that you need to do, um, every activity that's open at this time. This is also where, where you'll see submissions once we open them. Um, you know, this is how you're gonna upload your submission as well. Um, but right now, what's in the activities um, folder is the competitor agreement and completing registration, as well as um, being able to pay. So once you click the first step, the first activity, um, that is completing registration and um, paying the fee, you'll be answering questions um, that start with, um, you know, which uh, area you're focused in, your team name, whether you're a student, um, all of that, a description of your project, 
Um, and I'm going to just stop right here and say, uh, you are not going to be scored or evaluated on anything you enter or write here. This is just to gather information about you as teams and um, as well as this is what's going to be showing up um, on your profile as well. The next step after you pay and create your team profile, you would sign the competitor's agreement. This is going to be via DocuSign. And once you're in the prize operations platform, if you have any technical issues, please email popsupport at xprize.org. So real quick, I wanna talk about team matchmaking. A lot of you have been individuals reaching out saying, um, you know, I have ideas, I have skills, but I don't have a team. So what you can do is create the user profile in pop, um, you don't have to be a fully registered team to be able to search uh, for teams, but this is, you know, the matchmaking allows you to search for teams looking for additional members, contact that team to indicate your interest in joining them, and you can apply to join the team. Um, the way you do that is in your dashboard, you go to teams and you can enter, um, you know, you make sure you filter by prize, make sure you select carbon removal. Say you have skills in material science, chemical engineering, and you're looking to join a registered team. What comes up after you click search are all the teams that are currently looking for those skill sets um, among the teams that are fully registered. Um, so let's say uh, one of the teams is this team C negative. Um, you would go to apply to team. And this isn't a formal application. It's really just a message that will be sent to the team lead. Um, so here you wanna include your email address, your name, any other relevant information you'd like to provide the team lead. And once you do that, uh, the team lead will be sent a message um, saying so-and-so has uh, a wanted, uh, wanting to get in touch. And then the team lead will be directed back to POP uh, to view your message. Okay. This is a schedule of the competition milestones. Uh, this is also in the guidelines. So just wanting to put that again here. We are currently in the team registration period. Um, we've just wrapped up the prize guideline comment period. Um, we'll be publishing a new version of the guidelines soon. And the next big deadline is the student deadline, uh, the student awards uh, submission deadline. Okay, and then how to contact us. So for substantive questions about the competition, um, if you have questions about scope or anything in the guidelines, for example, please send those to carbon removal at xprize.org. If you're having tech support issues once you're in the prize operations platform, our tech team can help you with those and that's pop support at xprize.org. Also, when you're in pop, you'll see this question mark on every page on the bottom right hand corner that will also take you to um, tech support or pop support. Okay, so let's get into our live Q&A. All right, it's great to see so many questions coming in. Thank you so much for your engagement. I'm just gonna start uh, answering a few. And uh, I know Nikki has been answering quite a few questions uh, in the Q&A as well. So you can read through her answers. Um, but we've got a few uh, good questions that I thought I would I would uh, answer in person. So um, Asal asks, uh, how should the final design for this competition be presented? Is the article enough? So I want to be clear on um, on this point. Um, we require a working demonstration in order to be eligible for the milestone award and for the grand prize award. Um, we will require you to um, provide evidence of this working demonstration through a written submission that you'll submit uh, in advance of the deadlines that, that we've been talking about this morning. Um, so, uh, so you are gonna have to sort of like, you know, 
describe your solution in detail and provide uh, some technical information and provide some data to show that it works. And um, there, there's a verification requirement that we do for each round of the competition. And all this stuff is outlined in the guidelines. So I just wanna emphasize, um, go to our website and download the guidelines and, and take a read. Um, but uh, a working demonstration is a core requirement of the competition and, and will be a requirement for, for winning any of the, the prize money. So um, thanks for your question. The next question is from Bruno Beal. Um, Bruno asks, is there already an idea of how much carbon removal at gigaton scale should cost? That's a great question. I think the answer is no. Um, there's a lot of speculation, a lot of discussion in the world right now about what the cost of CDR is gonna be at scale. Um, and we don't have, uh, for this competition, we don't have a requirement. There's not like a, a criteria that you have to be cheaper than a certain dollar amount or, or you, you know. Um, so so uh, uh, having said that, the cost of the final solutions, um, uh, is a major factor in the uh, that the judges will consider when when awarding the prize. Um, so we really do want to we re really hope to see a lot of uh, teams demonstrate technologies that really start to drive down the cost of carbon removal, and that's one of our one of our our key um, our key uh, uh, objectives with this competition. Um, Uh, Nikki, Rupa, do you, have, do you guys have anything to add? Um, so we answered Bruno's question. I'm just looking here. Yeah, I'm just scrolling. Um, let's see. Here's one from David. David. Uh, David asks, can we return the carbon and oxygen to their elemental base? or alternatively make hydrocarbons from the carbon in CO2 and release the O2 back into the atmosphere? The answer is yes, but we require solutions to demonstrate durable um, CO2 sequestration. So if you are producing a hydrocarbon that will then be burned, the CO2 will return to the atmosphere and, um, and that's not considered durable. So it really depends on what the final form of that carbon is. Um, but fundamentally that, uh, that the, the notion of converting the CO2 chemically to you know, a different elemental form um, is, is fundamentally what we're all about here. So, um, so yes, but, uh, but, but make sure that your, uh, your solution results in a durable carbon dioxide sequestration. Okay, um, the question from Asal, thank you for this opportunity to answer questions. My question is how should the final design for this competition be presented? Is the article enough? Thanks again. Yeah, so I think um, uh, I, I think I answered this before, but, I'll, but it's a, a point that's worth emphasizing that um, you need a demonstration, right? We can't, we can't just, we, um, uh, Teams who present uh, carbon dioxide solutions that are only theoretical in nature or haven't actually been demonstrated or, and actually are not actually working uh, at the time of the submission will not be considered for an award. So, so you actually do need to build and operate um, a working CDR solution uh, in order to um, be eligible for the, for the award. Okay. Just do a quick call out from Andrew who highly recommended the Air Miners Bootcamp four week course. So that's a great resource to people who are just getting into the carbon removal space. And you know, you can sign up for that. I think it's just getting started and you'll learn a lot. It's a good overview of the landscape. Air Miners in general is also a great online community to join. It's a Slack community, but there are many resources, including job opportunities, funding resources, and you know, new research in all of the different fields that are coming out and people are posting and having discussions about. So if you are not on Air Miners, we highly recommend it. And then we mentioned this briefly, but we also just partnered with them to launch the new Air Miners Launchpad Accelerator, which is also in collaboration with Creative Destruction Lab. So if you do have an idea, you are starting a team or starting a new carbon removal business, we highly recommend joining that as a way to kind of get started. The first cohort kicked off last week, but they're gonna run a six week cohort 
every quarter. So definitely time to get in on the next one. So I just wanted to make a quick shout out to that since I saw it come up in here. Um, Aldo asks, is ton metric or imperial? Ton by weight, just to be clear, uh, of the initial CO2 gas. This, this is a great question. It's an easy answer. When we say ton, we mean metric ton of CO2. That's what we're talking about, metric ton of CO2. Um, I think we say that in the guidelines, but, um, but, but you know, everyone talks about tons. And, and uh, so that's a really good, good point worth clarifying. Metric ton of CO2. So there's a question from Andrew. I see that you say a demonstration that works at a rate of a thousand tons a year. Does that mean you wanna see a thousand tons of CO2 removed and sequestered over the course of the fourth year? Yeah, the answer is both, yeah. The best way to demonstrate that you have a rate of a thousand tons per year is by removing a thousand tons in a year. Um, that's, that's the goal, that's the benchmark, and uh, that's what we wanna see everyone shooting for. Okay. <clears throat> See, a uh, question from Einstein. Hello, the demo can be very costly as it involves a number of technological components. How can an individual implement the demo for the uh, kiloton per scale on time without access to budget? Yeah, that's a really great question. And, and I'd love uh, Nikki to weigh in on this as well. Um, we understand that these demonstrations are costly to build and run. Um, and, but, Fundamentally, it is up to each team to raise the funds and uh, and and operate the, um, the the demonstration in accordance with the guidelines. And so, we definitely respect that um, each of the teams is going to be uh, have to is going to have to fundraise. Um, and we have programming to help support some of that fundraising. Um, Nikki, do you want to just describe uh, a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the model of an X prize is that the money is awarded at the end. So it pays for kind of the results of the demonstration. That said, we know it's very challenging to get the capital to get moving initially. So we kind of built into this program more capital to be deployed up front. So there's two opportunities to apply for funding before the grand prizes are awarded. The first is the $5 million available for student teams. So if you are a student team, you can compete and com and apply to be eligible for the awards. Those will be up to $250,000 each, which is some good seed capital to get you started for kind of the prototype stage of the demonstration for the first submission. So that is um, available this fall. The submission deadline is October 1st. The next pool of money is the $15 million milestone awards that will be awarded um, next April. The submission deadline for that is February 1st, 2022. So make sure you apply for both of those funding opportunities. Those are unusual for X Prize to be awarding kind of that much money early on, but we know that promising demonstrations need funding support. Beyond that, we um, are basically trying to encourage folks to participate in other accelerator and funding programs such as Air Miners Launchpad and Creative Destruction Labs, other things that are out there. You can apply for many different clean tech accelerators and try and get early stage funding to support your initial ideas and concepts. The Circular Carbon Network that we mentioned briefly is another resource there. So we have developed a deal hub if you want to have your kind of deal, funding deal listed and sent out to investors in the clean tech space. That's something that we do through the Circular Carbon Network. So you just have to make sure that you sign up on that website to have your company listed in the Innovator Index. And then there's an opportunity to submit your deal um, to be featured. So that's something that is an XPRIZE initiative that we've been cultivating investors in this space to be interested in carbon um, deal flow. So that's another quick resource, um, but we'll continue to share opportunities as they become available. There's also a lot of funding coming out of ARPA-E and the Department of Energy and other grant programs in Canada. So we'll try and compile resources for funding opportunities for teams um, in one of our upcoming newsletters. So we're sending newsletters now out to all of the interested teams, fully registered teams, partially registered teams um, every two weeks with important information about the competition, what it means to compete, why you should compete, trying to help with frequently asked questions and funding opportunities is a great um, addition to that. So we'll try and get those in the newsletter as well. 
And I just want to add a note, please read the newsletters and please read the emails you receive from us. As you know, there's been a lot of interest in this prize. We get a huge volume of messages and requests. So that's sort of our way of sharing information as we have it with you every couple of weeks. So it's really important that you make sure you read them carefully. Um, the next question is from Aldo. I'm not sure, did we answer this one? Um, who will audit the estimated costs from phase one? How will you ensure the estimates are valid? Yeah, there's a couple of questions about um, about verification uh, in here. And, and uh, so that's a very good question. So for phase one, the verification is the responsibility of each team. Um, we've written this into the guidelines. So again, read the guidelines if you, if you haven't already. Um, we require an independent, competent third party uh, to, to sort of, you know, ba ba basically g give the stamp of approval that the, that the demonstration is, is actually working. Um, we have not published specific details about exactly how that works yet. And we are going to be publishing those guidelines over the summer. So stay tuned. Um, the answer is, uh, is, uh, yes, your technologies need to be verified. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll be releasing more information about how exactly that works. The second part um, of my answer is that the final arbiter of the um, award decisions is the expert judges. And these judges are experts across the field of CDR um, from you know, all the different forms of carbon dioxide removal, as well as experts in, in you know, different um, uh, you, you know, things like life cycle analysis and economics. We have not announced who the judges are yet, but those are the folks who are gonna be looking at the submissions and, um, and really interrogating them and making sure that, um, that the team's claims are, uh, are plausible and, and legitimate. Um, so so the, the objective for each team is really to make sure that you present a very, very strong case to the judges so that they feel like, oh yeah, this team has a, has a really good um, working solution. Um, so thanks for the question. Yeah, the next question is from Ginger Watkins. Does the demonstration of the key component need to be third party verified? Yeah, so that's the same, the same answer. The answer is yes, it needs to be uh, verified. Uh, we have a, some information in the guidelines right now and more information to follow. Okay, uh, question from Darren. Will there be more information about the insurance requirements? Does XPRIZE have any recommended insurance providers who are familiar with insuring an XPRIZE team? Nikki, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so the insurance requirements are outlined in the competitor agreement. So make sure you read the detail in that as you're signing the document to join the competition. So we do require that all teams competing show proof of insurance and the details about the li uh, general liability planner included in there, which should be pretty accessible to most people. If you are struggling and want to discuss that further with us, you can send us a note at the carbon removal at xprize.org email address and we can chat more about it. Yeah. And we won't be collecting uh, verifying insurance now. Uh, we will be doing that. Um, we'll be asking you to submit sort of proof of insurance uh, during the first submission deadline once that's open. Uh, one more point on insurance. The expectation yeah. is that you should obtain your insurance coverage mm -hmm. as soon as you start any of the competition activities related to operating equipment, anything that there might be a liability related with. So we will not be collecting it until February 1st, but as soon as you start operating equipment, building things in the lab, anything that there could be an accident with, you should really ensure that your, um, your coverage is, is set up at that point. So yeah. Any work that is leading to your work in the carbon in the carbon removal X prize should be covered. Okay. Um, question from oh, that's another insurance question. Are the is the insurance required um, all the same regardless of different levels of risks for the teams? Yes. Uh, yeah, we have a basic. Uh, level of general liability that we require each team to carry. And, um, you know, you may opt to have coverage in excess of that minimum. Um, that's really up to you. Um, as long as you meet the minimum defined by uh, X prize is, uh, is uh, you know, all you need to be uh, eligible um, as far as we're concerned. 
Um, let's see. I think there's a question about what evidence, um, uh, yeah. So what evidence do we need to provide with the proposal? So the proposals uh, will include um, written components and, uh, and requirements to upload documents to demonstrate the various aspects of the competition that I, um, I outlined in my presentation. Um, if you look at the uh, guidelines document, it describes those requirements in detail and the proposal, um, the proposal documentation is, is going to be really oriented around that. We have not released the proposal or the um, submission templates yet. Again, that's going to come later this summer um, and that'll, that'll uh, uh, describe in very explicit detail exactly what you need to upload um, in order to be considered for an award. And um, uh, those submissions will be uploaded to the prize operations platform website. So the same place you go to register uh, a team is the same place you'll be uploading those submissions. Um, okay, somebody asks, can you please elaborate about the official signatory for the student teams? Okay, we'll try to answer this. I mean, uh, we, we've describe this in the guidelines and um, I, I, what the guidelines say is is you need to have a letter of support from an academic institution and and we really leave it at that it's not it's not any more complicated than that um, if you can find uh, you know an administrator at your organization or at your your institution um, who can write a letter of support um, then that requirements covered okay. How are you, a uh, question from Jeffrey, how are you going to do a working demonstration to remove CO2 for a period of hundreds to thousands of years by February, 2022? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So um, what we wanna see is, uh, is uh, a plausible, teams make a plausible case that the CO2 is, um, is gonna be durably sequestered for a hundred years and present a, a, a plan to ensure, you know, with the outlines, any activities that have to be undertaken either to, um, to ensure that the CO2 stays uh, durably sequestered or, um, or to monitor and verify that the CO2 stays um, sequestered. And, and we wanna see those activities reflected in your cost model as well. So obviously we can't, um, we're not gonna wait a hundred years to pay out the prize, but uh, we wanna make sure that there's uh, that there's, uh, you know, uh, 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 we want to make sure that that it's uh, there's a legitimate case um, that the sequ the sequestered CO2 will uh, be durably sequestered for at least 100 years. All right, Aldo asks, will you notify teams if any change to the guidelines and terms of the contest are made after signing? Have any changes been made since April 27th? So the guidelines that are currently available on our website um, were launched uh, back in April and they were open for public comment. And we have collected all those comments and we are actually gonna be re uh, issuing a revised version of the guidelines um, in a few weeks. Nikki, can you remind me what date that is? Yes, I believe it's June 22nd that the new guidelines will be posted, but we will be sending them out in the email newsletter as well. So, you know, keep an eye out for that too. So our, um, we don't intend on making a lot of changes and, um, you know, the, the, the changes to the guidelines are something we take very seriously, but we are gonna be issuing uh, this revision towards the end of June uh, in response to public comments. And we are going to be issuing these technical uh, guidelines regarding the submission and stuff um, throughout the summer. So definitely keep, uh, keep an eye on our emails and uh, keep an eye on our, on our website. And we will be um, actively communicating out uh, any changes that occur over, over the coming months.
We received a handful of questions and clarifications just about kind of upcoming deadlines and steps. So I just want to reiterate to everyone that um, the important things to be doing right now are one, make sure you register in the competition, go to the main website, you can access the registration portal there. You need to create your team profile, pay the registration fee and sign the competitor agreement. That will mean you are officially registered as a team to compete in the competition. The deadline to have your registration complete is December 1st of this year. And as Rupa mentioned, everything submitted in the registration process is just informational. It's not used for your evaluation. So no, no reason to hesitate on making sure you're registered. Go ahead and do that. Your information can change. You can update it later. Um, but December 1st is the deadline to be a fully registered team in the competition. And then the submission deadline for all of the teams to be considered for the $15 million milestone awards is February 1st, 2022. That $15 million will be awarded um, on Earth Day of next year, 2022. The only thing to think about is if you're a student team, there are some earlier deadlines. So if you want to be considered for the $5 million in student awards, you need to make sure that you register and submit by October 1st of this year. So this fall in a couple of months, the student deadline is there and we will be awarding that $5 million um, sometime in November. So that's the only reason you need to get on board earlier with your submission information is if you're trying to apply for the student money. So I just wanted to reiterate that I've answered that question a couple of times for folks. Um, a student team can continue throughout the whole competition. That money is just an extra bonus for students to give them some seed funding to get them started. But the student teams will then be competing in the main competition with all of the rest of the teams and they have to meet all of the same criteria. So some people have asked how you transition from a student team into the competition. You will just move right along and you will continue with all of the other deadlines in the competition after the kind of student phase up front. That also applies to people who have been asking about um, if there's a separate registration process for the milestone award. And no, it's the same registration process. There's going to be um, a deadline, uh, a submission deadline for the milestone, but not it's not a separate registration process. If you register for the prize or the student competition, you're already, you're good to go. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, Ginger, referring to the cost of this cost section of the guidelines as they are being updated, what is your current thinking about how avoided uh, CO2 emissions um, such a, oops, where'd it go? Just disappeared. Um, how, What's your thinking about avoided CO2 emissions? Will they be given a specific dollar value even if it's assigned a very low dollar value? This would be helpful to support teams um, as they work to develop their solutions. Yeah, uh, great question. Um, so the subject of avoided emissions versus carbon removal comes up quite a bit. Um, the, we've tried to explain this in the guidelines. Um, definitely, uh, the, the, the competition is really focused on CO2 removal, not offsets or avoided emissions. However, we are giving each team an opportunity to um, make a case to the judges, any co-benefits or um, other value proposition that is offered by these, uh, these um, CDR projects in addition to the removed carbon. And avoided carbon is a part of that. And so we definitely want to um, highlight, uh, you know, the avoided emissions as a part of your value proposition, but the uh, priority is um, actual carbon dioxide removal and net, net demonstrating, you know, real net negative solutions. Okay, question from Christopher. Um, we've had issues with testing laboratories. Um, where the results are above outstanding. However, uh, in the case of Argon Lab, they tested it and said it was beyond explanation. A week later, claimed it didn't work. Um, how are we supposed to get proper testing? Right, well, there's, there's uh, 
I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to answer that question. I think it's up to each team to um, devise a strategy for building, operating, and testing uh, their equipment. Um, certainly, we would encourage each team to uh, be very careful about um, asserting ownership over their intellectual property and um, you know, getting patents where needed and keeping trade secrets where needed um, in order to uh, maintain you know, the confidence of your technologies. Um, uh, we will make sure all of XPRIZE is set up to ensure that the technical details of competing teams are held in confidence. Um, we have very strong non-disclosure non -disclosure agreements with everybody involved, including not just the staff members, but also the judges and any third party verifiers that we employ over the course of the competition. Um, and so we take uh, confidentiality of team submissions and team technologies very seriously. This is also something you can look at the competitor agreements about. We define um, intellectual property and confidentiality um, and non-disclosure in, um, you know, in all of its uh, legalistic glory in that document. So, uh, so take a look at that. Okay, a uh, question from Kirsch. For either the milestone demo or the one kiloton per year demo, are we expected to reach out to third parties for carbon removal verification ourselves and foot the bill? Can XPRIZE provide any consulting or funding for this? So for the milestone round, it is up to the teams to secure their own verification. In the final round of the competition, um, if you are selected for a site visit, XPRIZE will, put, will foot the bill for the verification. We'll send a verification team to your site to, uh, to conduct the verification. So, um, so the short answer is um, it's on the teams in the first round and it's on XPRIZE in the second round. What is the level of precision and detail required in the final budget of the final submission? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I mean, I think the level of we uh, precision and uncertainty is something that we take very seriously, and um, frankly, uh, that is an area of uh, where 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 you might have a competitive advantage or a competitive disadvantage. And so, we encourage all of the teams to try and maximize the certainty in their in their cost estimates and provide. Uh, Really strong evidence that the that the cost estimates are you know both are legitimate and measurable and and well defined. Um, take a look at the guidelines and um, stay tuned for um, the the technical details we'll be releasing over the summer, um, which will address that in a little bit more detail. So Keith asks about liability insurance requirements. Um, that is defined in the competitor agreement and um, there's no distinction between insurance requirements for student teams versus individuals versus other kinds of teams. So, um, you know, we, we require each team to carry general liability insurance and um, that requirement is, um, is the same for anybody registered in the competition. Jeffrey offered a suggestion to the group that Hartford is a company that offers liability insurance. So just mentioning that to the team. A uh, question from Anurag. I am creating a new sole proprietorship under my parents. My school is not much, is not active because of COVID. So can my student team be eligible to receive um, the prize on my current account of sole proprietorship? Um, yes. yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes if you're participating as an individual. Mm -hmm. If you have other team members that you're working with, um, you will need to register a legal entity uh, to, that, that your team will operate under. And so that, that could, um, you know, that, that needs to be, you know, uh, it, it depends on the jurisdiction you live in, I suppose, but um, you know, in the United States, it would be a, a registered corporation is, is what you'd be required to register if you're operating as a team. Like I said, if you're operating as an individual, then a sole proprietorship is sufficient. The other clarification there though, is that you do not have to be registered through your school to compete in the mm -hmm. student competition. You can you know, have a separate company, a sole proprietorship, whatever the legal entity is that you want. You just have to show you're eligible as a student for our eligibility requirements, but that doesn't mean that it has to be connected to a university, for example. Yeah, that's your choice. 
Okay. Okay, Mark asks, how do you verify that the device prototype is actually working as presented and indicated in the technical report? So in the, in the um, final round of the competition for the grand prize for the big bucks, we are actually gonna be con conducting on-site uh, in-person site visits to ensure that the technology is working and sort of do our due diligence around it. In the, for the milestone round of the competition, phase one we call it of the competition, um, we are not gonna be doing in-person verification, but we do require certification of your demonstration by a third party. And we are gonna require evidence of an operating de demonstration. So that means could include photos, video, data sets, uh, you know, and other information that uh, gives us an idea of the, um, not only the existence, but the performance of your technology. I'm going to skip to uh, Peter Judson. Um, would a video demonstration of a running solution in combination with a written submission be an advantage or is that is that possible to upload? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'd like to encourage uh, videos as part of the submission. Uh, like I said, we haven't released the submission guidance. Everything's gonna be uploaded through the prize operations platform and, um, and uh, we'll give you the opportunity to uh, submit uh, photos and video in addition to the, the sort of the technical detail, the written aspects of the competition. Um, okay. Let's see. There was one question about um, kind of what format to upload things in. So the actual submission templates are not live yet. So those will be coming soon um, in a couple of months. We will have a submission template for the student submission on October 1st and another submission template for the main submission for teams that will be live before the February 1st submission deadline. And it will be a mix of um, form entry questions that you just respond in free text fields, as well as PDF uploads and spaces to upload videos, as Mike mentioned. So it'll be a combination of different um, files that you can put into your submission that way. Mike, I think there's still a handful of technical questions. If you just want to like burn through some of these yeah. down from the top. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I answered the one from Mark already about how do you verify the device prototype is actually working. Um, like I said, our, the submission is going to be designed such that um, you can upload evidence of the working prototype, photos, video, data, and so on and so forth, as well as um, certification from a, from a uh, verifier of your choosing. And in the final round of the competition, it's gonna be all of that, plus the in-person site visit that XPRIZE will, um, will facilitate and, and in fact pay for. Um, so we're gonna cover the costs of verification um, leading up to the grand, grand prize uh, selection. So thanks for the question, Mark. Um, Thomas uh, Fargo sent some questions and uh, I'm gonna have to follow up with Thomas after the fact. So Thomas, if you're listening, um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, follow up with you after the fact, thanks. Okay, um, Einstein asks, is it 2.5 gigaton for 2030 or six gigaton for 2030 and 10 gigaton for 2050? Okay, so, um, the, the targets uh, in terms of the gigaton targets, we are, are really not relevant to the team's submissions. Um, we want teams to make a case that their technologies can scale to and, and beyond a gigaton. We don't specify on what time scale and we don't specify what level beyond a gigaton. 
Um, so, um, so don't worry too much about that. Those numbers, the 2.5, the 6 gigaton, the 10 gigaton, those are really global targets that policy leaders are discussing. And, um, and, and that's what forms the um, inspiration for this prize. Um, Damani asks, is a prototype enough for a working proof of, or for proof of working concept? The answer is yes, that may be enough for the milestone round. There's no, um, there's no uh, scale requirement to be eligible for consideration for a, one of the $1 million milestone awards. But there is a scale requirement for the grand prize. And we want to see teams demonstrating technologies at a scale of at least 1,000 tons of removal per year. So a uh, prototype would, would not be enough um, for the grand prize. Thanks for the question. Um, OK, another question about, uh, well, let's see here. In case of natural methods of removal of carbon dioxide, how will you measure the effectiveness of the method? That's a great question. It's really up to each team to, um, to make their case. Um, for natural solutions in particular, um, we need to make sure that uh, teams are providing evidence that the rate of removal or the CO2 flux is measurable and that the durability um, can be guaranteed over, over the long term. So we're not gonna tell you uh, exactly how to establish that, but but um, you know the team's ability to convince the judges that that their claims are legitimate is um, is is really what the competition is going to be, uh, what the award decision is going to be decided on. Um, if we start to noticeably alter the environment, won't the government get involved? Well, um, that's an interesting question. Um, it's important that each team uh, operate within the laws of the jurisdiction that they're operating in. And it's really up to each team to secure any permits or any um, permission from local authorities to operate their CDR solutions. Um, so, so definitely um, keep that in mind as you're making your plans. Permits can take a long time to get and it really depends on the jurisdiction you're in. So we can't give you any advice on how you need to do that, but um, you definitely need to uh, take that into consideration um, as, you, as you plan your, your submission. Um, okay, Kavish asks, is demonstration required for students? Um, in, or in order to be eligible for a student award, you do not need to have a working demonstration but you will be, uh, the awards will be granted on the basis of their likely impact. And in fact, on the likelihood of that team to, um, to actually you know, follow through on, on the project that they're seeking funding for. So you don't have to have a demonstration working at the time of submission, although it would help your case if you did. Um, it's not a strict requirement, um, but, but we do want to um, have confidence that your team is um, serious about about mobilizing um, whatever is in your proposal um, to, to compete in the competition. Um, Zoltan asks, is the final solution uh, uh, must be a single process or can it be a combination of several processes? The answer is it can be a combination of several processes. We do not um, have any requirement for um, things to be sort of consolidated, but we do want to see the full system and we really need to see the, the, the full end-to-end -end, you know, capture and processing and sequestration of CO2. And um, at least for the, for the finals, we wanna see that as a, as a uniform system. So um, we, wanna, we wanna basically be able to follow those CO2 molecules as they go from the environment into their final sequestered form. And we don't care how many steps or how many sub-processes or, or how you need to break it down. Um, that's, that's really up, for each, uh, up to each team to, uh, to define. Um, somebody asks if D Demani asks, I'm a recent graduate. Um, uh, my innovation is something I came up with during school, but now I'm going independent as a graduate. Will I still be considered for student submission? I think the answer is yes. The student submissions are open to both recent graduates and, graduates and current school students. 
please look at the guidelines and uh, the eligibility criteria for student teams is spelled out in detail there. Um, Zoltan asked, should the simulation of the process also include economic efficiency? I think the answer is yes. Um, take a look at the guidelines. Again, um, you know, we want to see the cost estimate. And so um, obviously that, uh, you know, includes um, a number of economic uh, considerations and assumptions. Um, so I think the answer is yes. Um, Jan asks, uh, for calculations, I think you wanted to submit standard metrics for capturing of stone trees, et cetera. When will this be released? Um, yeah, so th we're, this is something we're working on right now and we will be releasing um, these guidelines over, over the summer. So um, definitely stay tuned, watch your email box. Um, and uh, we will, uh, if you haven't already, please register. And uh, that's the best way to keep in touch with us. See. I'm seeing more questions that I feel like I've answered already. Like, um, mm -hmm. for example, you know, can the solution be a multi-step process that provides replacement technologies to achieve zero emissions with a follow-on step to reduce negative carbon capture? I think the answer is yes. Our only requirement is that the solution needs to be net negative. Um, from a cradle to grave uh, basis and inclusive of all the steps um, in, in your process. Um, and beyond that, we don't really, we don't really mind how you do it. Um, so, so I, I think that answers that question. A question about the clarifying the, um, when I say the scale of the project will be a point for the judges, what exactly do you mean? Well, um, I can't speak for the judges because the judges are, are the ones who are making the decision. And the, um, how we consider the scale is, is written into the guidelines. Um, for the grand prize, we'd like to see uh, teams demonstrate at least 1,000 tons per year. And for the milestone competition, there is no scale requirement, but, um, but uh, scale will be considered by the judges as they, you know, alongside all of the other data as they, as they um, make their award decision. So um, I think that's as much as I can say for now. Um, you know, stay tuned, um, read the guidelines first if you haven't, and um, we'll be releasing um, more information on the technical submissions this summer. Oh, this is actually, this is a good question. David asks, CO2 is an oxide gas most prolifically produced in internal combustion engines. So a question that occurred to me is, are there plans to sequester any of the other oxide gases also produced in internal combustion engines? Um, this competition focuses on carbon dioxide. Um, lots of folks have asked us, um, you know, what about methane? What about uh, nitrous oxides? What about sulfur oxides? Uh, the answer is, um, all of those other oxides or other um, greenhouse gases would be considered as a co-benefit alongside the CO2. So our primary focus is the carbon dioxide, but if your solution also mitigates other GHGs, greenhouse gases, um, we would love you to include that in your submission and, and uh, you know, list that as a co-benefit of the, of the process. Um, Errol asks, if the cost of an energy system which includes intrinsically negative CO2 emissions results in a profit that is considered, is that considered zero cost for sequestration? This is very desirable. That's a really great question. So when we say cost, we want to see um, just the cost, just the cost side of the ledger. But we also want to see any kind of value that your solution generates. We're going to put both of those numbers to the judges. And teams that can make a case that um, you know, either they're minimizing their cost 
or they're generating lots of revenues or profits, those are both really attractive um, solutions. So we don't have a requirement for teams to generate revenue, but we definitely want to we definitely want teams to uh, to make that case and um, demonstrate how their technologies might be economically viable. Um, in addition to um, you know managing the costs. So I hope that answers your question, Errol. Um, I think the answer is uh, is uh, um, yes, but um, but we, we want to see the breakdown of the numbers. Einstein asks, in our case, the project is a process, not a device. This is a really important point. Um, uh, processes are fine. You don't have to like build a machine to be eligible for the, for the awards. Processes are fine, but we want to see you operate them as a project. So, um, so the, the, the answer is um, uh, yes, uh, the processes are eligible, but you need, to, you need to be able to provide a physical demonstration of that, pro, of that process. So you have to actually operationalize a project and show the removal of CO2. That's, that's really, really important. Are we doing on time, guys? What's our? Uh... We're at ten thirty. Um, so we've gone gone thirty minutes over, but I know that our uh, presentation took a, took a bit. So I think we should just try and run through the rest of these open questions. Looks yeah. like we'll have sixty <laughs> participants listening. So mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Okay. So. Um... We answered this one. I think we answered this one. Zoltan asks, is household waste considered CO2 emissions? Um, I think the answer is it depends on the nature of the waste. Um, anything that can be, that can decompose typically does uh, contribute to CO2 emissions. Um, so I think typically the answer is yes, but I think it depends on, on the details there Zoltan. So, um, one of the requirements of the competition is demonstrating that the solution is net negative on a life cycle basis. And we will be using a, a life cycle analysis methodology to, to assess that. That will include both an inventory of the uh, greenhouse gases that are consumed and generated in the process, as well as the greenhouse gases associated with the end of life of um, any products or, um, or in fact, the sequestered um, CO2. So um, if that system includes household waste, then, um, then, certainly, um, then certainly that would have to be considered uh, in that analysis. Um, <clears throat> in case of natural methods of removal of carbon dioxide, how will you measure the effectiveness of those methods? Yeah, I think I answered this one already. Um, the answer is uh, it is the responsibility of each team to um, to uh, provide uh, evidence that their solution works and that uh, their measurements are legitimate and of sufficient uh, quality and precision um, to give the judges confidence in in awarding the prize. Um, Okay, Nitish asks, can I be an individual person in my student team with my dad as my official leader who can do the formalities? I think the answer is yes. We don't have any requirements about how you structure your team. Um, we do ask that student teams are um, led by students and uh, have uh, a majority of student members. So um, certainly no, uh, no issue whatsoever having your dad involved or, or other, um, other mentors. And, um, and uh, you know, in fact, we encourage that, um, but we wanna make sure that um, student teams are, um, are majority student and, uh, and student run, thanks. Francisco asked for the sequestered CO2, do we need to get a market study for the product? Mm -hmm. um, I think the answer is yes, uh, but it kind of depends on what exactly you're doing. Um, 
um, you know, we, we, our X Prizes philosophy is always rooted in, um, you know, verifiable independent data is the best kind of data. So um, if your claims include a specific kind of product uh, and, and there is publicly available independent data um, establishing either the, you know, establishing any of those, the properties of that product, um, we would encourage you to uh, include that in your submission. Um, but is it required? It, it kind of depends, I think, on, on what you're doing. Um, Francisco, if you uh, want to reach out to us uh, with um, a little bit more detail about what you have in mind, we'd be happy to um, engage with you uh, uh, offline on that. Um, I think I answered Zoltan's question already about economic efficiency and standard metrics. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Mm -hmm. um, if scalability is based on manufacturing units, i.e. automobiles, how would scalability be determined? Number of cars manufactured? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think it's up to each team to, to sort of make their best case on scalability. Certainly, you know, automobiles are a fairly well understood market and we would expect uh, teams to, to, you know, make a case based on that market um, that, uh, that, um, you know, how, how the, how the solution sort of fits into, uh, into, into that story. Um, yeah, good question. Thanks, Danny. Okay, Janas, just to make sure I get it right, the team must directly produce a solution that captures CO2 indirect method, methods where you coordinate others to sequester CO2 through the solution. Um, and you can make sure that their capturing is measurable and trackable wouldn't work. Uh, that's correct. The team has to directly capture CO2. Now, if you'd like to build a coalition with other teams, and capture CO2 uh, with several partners, that's totally fine. Um, we welcome that. And in fact, if you want to cooperate with other teams or merge with other teams, that's totally fine. But within the, the team that you define, um, we want those teams to be actively uh, um, capturing and sequestering CO2 themselves. Um, one thing that I'll point that I'll make, uh, this is a really important, um, uh, clause in the competitor agreement, each team is required to have ownership or um, a right to exploit um, any technology that they that they deploy in the competition. So it's not enough to say, "Hey, look, those guys are capturing CO2, and and um, and I made them do it." You know, you have to make sure that that the, the those folks are included in your team, and and uh, that your team has the right to. Um, to exploit any technology uh, used to win the competition. Okay, David Cardell asks about carbon monoxide. Does removing carbon, carbon from carbon monoxide count towards meeting the carbon removal? Uh, no, we're focused on CO2. Um, we would uh, consider carbon monoxide management uh, co- a co-benefit or an additional benefit that we would like to see you highlight in your proposal, um, but we really are focused on, on CO2. Uh, Benjamin asks, for new approaches that will be hard to get up and running for physical demonstration by February 2022, for various stages in a combined multi-step process, can the relevant aspects of each separate step be demonstrated in isolation to substitute for the demonstration of the integrated whole? The answer is yes, that's fine. Uh, we do not require integration or a complete end-to-end -end demonstration for consideration for the milestones, but we do require that full end-to-end -end integrated solution um, be presented for consideration for the grand prize. Um, and you'll have to have that up and running by 2024. So Benjamin, we are definitely looking forward to seeing your demo um, this year and it doesn't need to be 100% 
button down um, by, uh, by next, um, this coming winter. Good question. Okay, we're getting into the end here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, when I joined a team or formed my team, I lost the ability to contact other teams on the XPRIZE platform. Okay, Rupa, maybe you can, uh, you can take that one. Okay. Um, when I joined a team or formed my team. Oh, I see. Yeah, that is targeted towards individuals looking to join a team. Um, please reach out to me at carbonremoval at xprize.org and I can try to get this sorted out for you, Andrew. Okay, and the last question, um, this was question was submitted anonymously. It says, suppose you were here to validate um, is an operational method of sustainable lifestyles. Can that team um, proceed to accept runner up to balance the solution's effective durability? I do not, uh, I'm not sure I understand that question. So for whoever asked, um, their um, uh, uh, initials are LK, um, maybe reach out to us with an email and we can, we can address your question offline, thanks. Okay, hey, I think we're about ready to wrap up. Um, Danny asks about IP. Um, you have to have IP. You have to. You have to either own or have a license to exploit any technology that you demonstrate um, in the competition. Um, so you, if if that's equipment that you've purchased, that's acceptable. If it's equipment that you have leased, that's also acceptable. But you need to have. Um, you need to. You need to have the. Uh, the, the right and the authority to um, commercially exploit that technology in order to be eligible. And that's it, 117 questions I think we answered. Oh. We answered. Uh, in record time, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll be doing, so we'll be doing a couple more of these webinars and, you know, we'll be doing them throughout the competition. Um, but we're having them every couple of weeks uh, at the beginning because, you know, there's just been a ton of questions coming in. I will say, really important, please read the guidelines, please review the competitor agreement. There is actually a ton of information that answers a lot of your questions in those documents. Um, to contact us, please contact us at Carbon removal at xprize.org. I put that into the chat um, just for reference. We will be making the recording of this webinar available. We'll have a landing page. Um, if you go to the main prize page, uh, there's a tab there that uh, says, I think, webinars and events. I'm not sure, but we just added that, and that's where um, you can access a recording once we once we put that together. Um, guys, uh, is there anything else we want to add? Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for taking the time to be with us this morning and, um, and sticking, sticking with us to the, to the bitter end. And, um, you know, we're here to, we're here to help support you and we want to see, um, as many teams be successful in this competition as possible. So, um, so don't delay. If you haven't registered already, please register and then get to work. <laughs> um, time is, uh, is going to be short and, um, and there, there really isn't a lot of time between now and the milestone submission deadline. So, um, so if you haven't already uh, started, we'd love to, um, to see you guys start to mobilize those demonstrations. Okay. I think that's it. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, we will be um, having another webinar in a couple weeks and please look out for our newsletter that's gonna be going out next week with some more information. Okay, thanks all. <laughs>